Good morning YouTube and today's video we're going to go up the Hamble River. Located in Hampshire, England, the Hamble is just 6.3 miles long and it's tidal for around half of that. It's been associated with boating since the medieval period and in 2022 the many marina berths on the lower reaches are amongst the most expensive in the UK. Today we're headed up to Mercury Yacht Harbour which is just over two nautical miles up the river. The route is fairly straightforward, it's very well buoyed and by far the biggest challenge is the sheer volume of craft that you'll encounter on the way up the river. Tidewise, the Hamble enjoys the central Solent's extended high water stand and there's also the young flood stand, so the incoming tide can be quite gentle for much of the flood. But my oh my, once that's over, the ebb flows out like a dam burst and berthing in tight marina berths with a stiff breeze and other river users to consider, it has the potential to soil the trousers of even the saltiest of sea dogs. The approach is straightforward. As you leave the Solent, heading up Southampton water, you need to set a course for the Hamble Point, South Cardinal Boy. Be wary of being set too far east. The Baldhead Green Boy marks a depth contour, the other side of which things get very sticky very quickly. The South Cardinal is a larger size, and you should leave this to port as you start your approach to the river. The speed limit is six knots from here on in, and you should switch your VHF to channel 68 for commercial traffic movements, although there are very few of these, and Bewley River Radio uses the same channel for berthing, so it's more annoying than it is useful. Traffic-wise, even on a quiet day, it's everything from children in oppies to shiny power cruisers, and everything in between. You turn into the river proper at number 7 Starboard Beacon, the array of training lifeboats on the Warsash Maritime School pontoon being an easy mark to go for. By contrast, the number 11 Starboard Hand Boy is not much larger than a floating traffic cone, so you need to have your eyes open to spot it. On the opposite bank is the first of the many marinas. This one is Hamble Point, the next big one is Port Hamble, so check which one you want to go for before you get on the radio and start talking to the wrong one. As with most marinas in the UK, they're all on Channel 80, a ship-to-shore duplex channel, so you can't hear other ship stations, only the marina, which makes using busy rivers like this farcical at peak times. For pre-booking a berth, the mobile phone is often a better option. Once past the first of the green floating traffic cones that make up the starboard hand lateral voyage, you'll see a pontoon almost in the middle of the river. A quick glance with the binoculars and you'll observe a red lateral mark with a green central band. A panicked browse through a reference book and you'll recognise a port hand preferred channel marker, allowing you to confidently select the right hand channel, which unless you were going to the marina, you would have been doing anyway. Next up on the starboard side is Warsash, a variety of berthing options, a good pub and the harbour master's building. As with most of this river, it's lined with moorings of one type or another, all the way up beyond Burlesdon. Amongst the melee of traffic weaving between the mooring trots are the ferry boats, which have been playing their route from Hamble to Warsash for the last 500 years or so. The current ones are shocking pink, not a colour that I suspect was popular back in the late 1400s. Everything was black and white in those days. There are a lot of private yacht clubs and private moorings along both sides of the channel, and you might be able to get a visitor's berth by prior arrangement but the fuel pontoon at Port Hamble marks the outer edge of a marina where membership is not required. As long as you have cash, they'll take anybody. There's a waterfront restaurant and chandlery, as well as a short stroll into the Hamble village, which has many fine places to eat and drink. Once past Port Hamble, it's more boatyards and moorings, until the river begins to curve to the left, as its banks, now heavily tree-lined, start to draw a little closer. Just around the curve, set back from the river in a sheltered woodland area, is Mercury Yacht Harbour. Originally built by Round the World Yacht Race winner Sir Robin Knox Johnson in 1971, Mercury was one of the first marinas in the country. Hard to believe that marinas have only really been around for 50 years, and I've been using them for 30. Makes me feel blooming old. The biggest challenge when going into a visitor's berth is finding it. We were allocated Delta 34, which is starboard side 2 if you go bows in. So you can rig lines and fenders on the right side, but you don't know what the pontoons are going to be like, or what the boat you might be moored next to will be, what stream might be running. But before you get to worry about any of that, first you've got to find the darn thing. 
see if that's as even as up. Is that even numbers then? It's alright, but doable. Shouldn't be too difficult this one babe, it should be because we're going to get blown onto it nicely. Genuine excitement this morning with the butty situation in that we've discovered these. With this experimental butty, we're keeping it standard, a baseline if you will. Uh, we're going to use the Sheldon's oven bottom muffins and standard tomato ketchup. Nothing clever, nothing bespoke. Just your standard ingredients. So are you uh, quite excited to try the Tesco's finest breakfast pork pate? What? This Tesco's finest breakfast pork oh, well. pate? Patty? You said patty. patty. Yes! <laughs> Tesco's finest Look. It says it's got herbs, nutmeg and white pepper in it, which is fair play. I can't taste the seasoning particularly well. It's not very over-seasoned. It's quite plain. It's nice though. So, what are you thinking out of ten for so far? Uh, uh, six, maybe? Nine, six and a half? Six and a half? See, I'd probably, I'd, I'd live with a seven. I think seven's all right. It's not a special, is it? It's a bit eggy. Eggy? There's something a bit eggy about it. <laughs> so, despite the finest moniker, um, they're alright. Seven out of ten. 